Hold on, mate. Just popping on the plane now. Hold on. Yep, that thing. Just a fresh test. Yep, right. I'm, I'm just, just sitting in my seat now, mate. I'll see you soon, eh? Linking up the old team. Going to be great. Okay. Cheers, Alejandro. Yep, looking forward to seeing you in Mexico, mate. Right, cheers. Oh, all right. One more chance. Hello everyone and welcome back to the Hexagon Challenge here on Sean Does FM. I hope you're doing well and are looking forward to the last piece of this Hexagon Challenge and we're starting it today entering North America. If you're looking forward to what's coming ahead, remember to go down below, leave a thumbs up on the video and if you're new around here and want to stick around also consider hitting that subscribe button and turning that notification bell on as well but as you might have been able to tell from the intro if you've been around the channel for a little while and this series we are linking up with an old friend in Alejandro Gutierrez but the club that he is at you would have probably been able to tell we're going to Mexico despite what my shirt choice might suggest that might be coming up in a later series hint hint but we are going to Monterrey in Mexico so this is one of the top two clubs in Mexico as you would have seen at the end of yesterday's episode after we resigned from our job at Beijing Guan, which if you missed the episode, I'll leave a link to in the top right corner. We suggested we'd be going to one of the top teams in either Mexico or America. We were always leaning towards Mexico and Monterrey. If we look at the season preview, we're ranked the second best team in Mexico behind Club America. That would have been a really good job if it came up, but this one just felt too good to turn down when it did come up, especially once we discovered that one of our former players from Atletico Nacional where we won the Copa Libertadores, was there and is actually the club captain. Second overall, and they actually topped the league table for the first phase of the season in Mexico. Unfortunately, didn't make the final, so they are yet to qualify for the Champions League for next season. But with the way things work here in Mexico, as long as we finish top 12 in the second part of the season, we'll still have a shot at reaching that final. So still in with a hunt, and we're also as you'll see shortly in the Copper MX final, which is coming up in the not-too-distant future. But a decent team. They haven't got anyone in the Dream 11, so we can't show you that. But second ranked in the season preview. Currently sitting 12th, but there's the beautiful man himself. Alejandro Gutierrez, a player we've got a lot of experience with from Atletico Nacional. Can play right wing and up front. He's the club captain at 28 years old from Colombia. So it's a good little link up to finish our time in the hexagon challenge hopefully as this is the last piece of the puzzle that we do need having just picked up the asian one at beijing guan but a club with a lot of transfer budget we're not in a transfer window either so that's only going to balloon up once we get to the end of the season we just need to get these guys hopefully into the playoffs in the latter stages of the season here and see what we can do not too many expectations on us because of how late we're joining them but 12th in the overall table for the second part of the season at the moment Hopefully we can build them up a little bit and if things go well, there's still a chance for us to pick up two trophies late on in this season. But it is Monterey who we will be going to. We'll click continue and run you guys through the club introduction and we've got a game coming up fairly shortly off the back of this. So we'll do that as well, as well as introduce you guys to the squad once we load our tactics. So there is the message we have joined CF Monterey, 43 years old in game in 2033, of course. Three years since our Champions League win with PSG, as you can see down near the bottom. So apparently we're a good get for Monterey. And yeah, looking to use this club to round off this hexagon challenge, even if it might take a couple of seasons to actually get there. It's a big club. And when a big club like this comes up, it just felt too good to turn down instead of just sitting there and waiting for maybe Club America to come up. But they're doing quite well at the moment, so that looked unlikely, especially with a new manager only having joined them fairly recently. But the club was formed in 1945. They're a highly successful club. They have won the Copper MX three times in real life and one time since the save started in 2030. And they also have eight CONCACAF Champions League titles to their name. So a little bit different to Beijing Guan in that these guys have actually tasted a lot of success in continental football. A good stadium for us to go to, 63,000 capacity. Fairly new considering it was built in 2015 and some really good training facilities. So this should be a good club with some nice youth systems as well. Media prediction fourth, second in the season preview. So 
definitely a club that should be doing a lot better than they are in the second part of the season anyway, and that is no doubt why the former manager has lost his job. But there is the very quick team report. There's our supposed starting 11 duty areas on the right wing. Interesting, we played him up front when we were at Atletico Nacional, so we'll see what we do with him once we get into things. We've got a few players who are joining in the future at the end of the season who have been given fees for, both from China, so that's going to be interesting to see what happens with those two, not players I'm overly familiar with, which is surprising considering we've just come from there and a couple of players in at the club on loan and out on loan as well. And there are our objectives. You can see we're not being judged on much. The only thing that we're going to be judged on, because we've already reached the final of the Copper MX, is to try and reach the opening stage final of the second half of the season. It's actually a little bit of a tough one, that one, because we're going to need to shoot up the table to get into a position where we can make the final, albeit even if you finish 12th, you've still got a chance. So as long as we can just hold steady ground, get our tactic ingrained into these guys and they can grow with us, and hopefully we'll be ready to strike in the latter part of the season. But a little bit of a tougher task there than I thought. I saw the not judging and thought would be okay there, but we might have to produce something pretty quick once we get here. But as I said, it was kind of too good of a job to turn down, especially at this stage in the challenge where there's not many clubs who will actually be suitable for what we're looking to do at short notice and off the back of the season. Just keep on working towards winning the Liga MX. The other goal that is there in our current year's objectives is to be competitive on average points with us having won the first stage of the season in the actual league table-wise. We didn't win the competition because we got knocked out before the finals here, but they did top the overall league table for that first half of the season. So if we can pick up some decent results, we should definitely be competitive, and that's one we should be ticking off. But yeah, going to have to get these boys into form a little bit quicker than I would have thought, but still... As long as we can do a half-decent job here, it's all about building for next season. If we can sneak into the Champions League, then that would be great. But it would certainly just building up over a few years, perhaps, and then looking to strike the first time we're able to when we do get into the Champions League here in North America, especially with a few transfer windows under our belt. That could be a nice way to build up the squad depth should we need to. And we are now officially at the club. You can see we've still got that nice 81% win record, which after going through five continents, it's a very good win record, only a 6% loss record as well. So hopefully we can keep that somewhere near and we should be making our way into the business end of the second part of the season. And we'll show you guys the table for this current stage. We're just over halfway through it. We've got 19 games. We've played 11, so eight left to try and get these guys further up the table. As I said, as long as we finish 12 or above, we're going to be in the playoffs anyway but we'd like to shoot up the table a little bit more than we are. You can see why the previous manager got sacked. Quite a few red dots in recent games, but as I said, this team is a lot better than that table would suggest they are. We can definitely shoot up, and we've got a game coming up in today's episode against Pumas, who are up in fourth, so that's going to be a good early test for us to see if these players can adapt to our tactic nice and quickly and see if we are good enough to be challenging this early on. I will show you guys the first stage just to see what has happened in the season today. There you can see they did actually top the league table, as we said, but unfortunately, once we got into the playoffs, they were not in that round. But once we get to the quarterfinals, they defeated Deportivo Toluca 3-0 on aggregate, but unfortunately, they just missed out in the semifinals going down 4-2 to Club Nakaksa. So a little bit disappointing there, but hopefully we can turn these guys around based on how they're doing in the second part of the season and get them into the hunt to win the second part of the season once we do get to the playoffs. And if we can do that, we would go to the Champions League next season. So a big carrot dangling in front of us. Would be very nice to do it this season, but if it doesn't happen, we will always have next season to rely on. And even if we make the final, I believe that we'll be going through to the Champions League as well. The two teams that make the finals are the two teams that go into that competition. So as long as we can reach a final, which I believe they're expecting us to do the board, then we will be playing Champions League football next season. But I'll come back shortly, get my tactics, organized staff and stuff. Then we'll run you guys through the squad and play our first game in charge here at Monterrey in Mexico. So we have gone forward until the day of the game, set everything up, got some staff members steadily coming in now that we've appointed them. And this is how our Cavisham Crusher 4-3-3 tactic looks at Monterrey, the tactic that we've used to win the prior 
five champions leagues. I will put a video out after I complete the hexagon challenge about how we've done it with this tactic to win all six, provided that we do get the job done with it. It's almost a cheat code. It's a very good tactic, as we've seen. You know, wherever we have gone, it's worked at the likes of Hamilton Wanderers as well as the likes of PSG. So a really good tactic. Here is our starting 11, though. We won't run you guys through the entire team yet because we've only got this latter part of the season to get through. I'm probably only going to be using the first choice rotation for that for the most part on camera anyway because if we go down a bit further, you can see there's a lot of players at the club, a ton of them, and we can't go through all of them and most of them probably won't be playing for me and we'll do a bit of a tidy up next year perhaps. But the only rule we have to consider is we need nine Mexican-born players in the squad overall. So that means we don't have to put all nine in the starting 11. It's just in the squad overall. Obviously, we're going to need to have a few in the starting 11, but we can definitely use those guys to bulk out the bench should we need to. And that is a path that we have gone down. But more or less, this is the team that we did from the quick pick best 11 function up here. So in the end, our assistant manager actually getting something right for once, which is good to see. But our starting goalkeeper is Lukas Schneller, a German freestar rated player. Sweeper keeper attack looks half decent. His first touch could use a little bit of use. Only okay at rushing out, but on the whole, a really well-rounded goalkeeper. And at 31 years old, looks decent enough to be keeping hold of. Don't know if he's got much resale value. So he is our number one for now. Then we get to the wingbacks. We've got Clayton, who is a Brazilian right back decent stats actually for what we need to use these guys for in both Africa and Asia we were really struggling to find wingbacks who suited what we did but they still did a decent job the ones that we had in those one and done seasons that's definitely not going to be the case here at Monterey but this guy looks pretty good at 26 years old three and a half star ability and fairly well rounded as well worth 4.5 million so a decent option and on the left hand side it is Jose Ayala, one of our homegrown players or national-born players. I should say a 28-year-old Mexican, three stars, and yet again, a pretty decent left wing-back option. Not quite as well-rounded in the technicals and the mentals as Clayton, but his physicals are very good, and that could cause teams some issues. Can also play on the left wing as well, so a good left-side option for us with his one international cap. In terms of our first-choice centre-backs, we've got Paulo who is a Brazilian 31-year-old, three-and-a-half star rated player, 13 heading, 16 jumping reach. That's what we look at mainly for our centre-backs, especially from set pieces. And he's 1.87 metres tall. Another really well-rounded guy. We put him on a ball-playing defender. And his first touch and passing are actually decent enough to handle that role. So really well-suited to what we need. And on the other side is another Mexican player, Luz Montoya, three star with a little bit of potential. The grow being only 23 years old, another national born player will get him in the right position and show you guys his stats to what he's going to be doing. 17 heading and 13 jumping reach, a really good header. Only 1.79 meters tall, so it's not great, not as tall as his Brazilian friend, but that heading is very good. And once again, another decently rounded player, not quite as well rounded as Paolo, but still pretty good for what we're going to need to use him for in that ball playing defender role then we get to the midfield and we've got one of the better players at the club here Marco Barco he is an Argentinian 27 year old three and a half star ability we go down to the role that we're going to be using him for defensive midfielder though his marking could use a little bit of improvement I'm wondering if that's an area that we're going to need to improve going into next season but apart from that really good passing very good decision maker he is a very good looking midfielder just not too sure where he's going to fit into our team if we show you guys where he looks like a bit further forward. Definitely a quite good advanced playmaker, but still some little weaknesses there dribbling-wise and box-to-box. -box, his finishing is only okay, so a bit of an interesting player there for us. One of the better ones at the club, but not too sure how he's going to fit into our actual systems that we use. So that's an interesting one, but a good player to have on board. Then we've got in the advanced playmaker role is Renan, another Brazilian on the advanced playmaker. As we said, some really good stats for that role. He's around the 16, 17, and 15s with quite a few of them, so that's really good. And he's a good free kick taker as well and can take corners pretty well as well. So he's going to be quite important to us set piece-wise, among other things. But a good little player there for us from Brazil. And then to round out the midfield, it is the Chilean Diego Hernandez. He is 26 years old, will be our box-to-box -box in this for the rest 
of this season. He looks the best suited considering what we've got in those other positions. As you can see, a few nice green stats. And he's quite well balanced and has good natural fitness as well. Should handle that role fairly well, even though some of those stats mainly finishing not quite where you'd want them to be or tackling. So the midfield, not ideal in terms of their stats for what I'd like, but hopefully these guys can get the job done until the end of the season and we'll give them that with no transfer window until then anyway to try and prove their worth to see if we need to bring a bit more suitable players to our system in them. But that's our midfield for now. And then we get to up front, obviously a player that we have some experience with on the right wing, that is Alejandro Gutierrez. We play him at striker at Atletico Nacional and as you will see, he did a really good job for us in that 2026 season when we were at the club, 39 games, 26 goals, 9 assists and 10 player of the matches. That was the year we had him and he was a beast. He was playing up front for most of that season. So a little bit different here. He's a bit more suited to the right wing, but still going to be quite good for us. Some of those stats for a verted winger, like the crossing, that's the big worry I have with him, but everywhere else he does look quite good. Maybe we could switch him to an inside four, but we'll see what happens. Very good player though, we already know that, and he is the club captain, so better look after our old boy there. On the other wing is the Brazilian Wellison, 22 years old. You can see he's a quite good looking inverted winger with a little bit more potential to grow to four stars. Quick, pacey, is going to be a handful for some opposition players, and very good passing as well. So looking forward to using this guy, and to round out our ideal starting 11, it is another Mexican, a 30 year old, and Luis Puente. A big, tall guy, 1.89 metres, and he's got decent heading and jumping reach as well. So he's going to be a player that we can use alongside our centre-backs from corners, which is quite nice. And he's a decent advance forward too. You look at those stats. Passing is really the only weakness, but apart from that, looks pretty good. You could argue work rate as well, but he will be quite good for us. And we do have a good option on the bench should this guy not perform. But that's going to be our starting 11 for the rest of this season anyway. And then we get to the bench. This will chop and change depending on, obviously, who's in and who's out. But at the moment, Estrada to cover right back and centre back, a two-star Mexican who can grow to three and a half, probably going to be covering wing back more than centre back. But you can see his heading is not bad, jumping reach not bad at 1.8. Decent bench option with a bit of room to grow. And the same applies to Ortiz on the left-hand side. This guy has actually got 17 jumping reach and a lot higher, so it's probably a centre back cover out of those two options. But as you can see, you can also cover left back quite nicely so we've got some fairly versatile defensive options there who have a bit of room to grow in terms of their stats then we get to the defensive midfield and another player who can cover centre back this is Philippe De Luna 21 years old again a fair bit of potential 1.85 metres decent jumping reaches heading could use work but defensive midfield his markings okay it's actually a bit better than Barco so that's something to keep in mind so this guy should be able to do a decent job at breaking things up in that role when we need to use him. So that's mainly going to be his role defensive midfield, but he can go forward or back as well. And our other midfielder, this guy looks a really good box-to-box -box option from what I can tell, and that is Hugo Gelardo, 20 years old, a fair bit of potential this guy to grow. And you look at him box-to-box, -box, he's actually quite well-rounded, potentially more so than Hernandez. So a really good bench option for us there, and he will definitely grow. Good player to keep hold of, being one of the national-born players. Then we get to the wingers. First up, we have Josue Villalva, a 27-year-old Mexican. So getting on a little bit, but three-star potential. As you can see, he's really solid at what we're going to need him for. Pretty well-rounded for that role. Still got quite good physicals, so should provide a handful when we need to give Gutierrez a little bit of a rest. And on the left-hand wing side, it is Gelardo Garcia, another player who's got a bit of potential, like most of these players, on the bench, pretty good physically and fairly well-rounded as well. A few areas he could work on, but we're going to be doing that in training and should be a good bench option for us. And then we've got the only non-national born player who does make up the bench. It's a Paraguayan international and Lucas Nunes, a player I've seen floating around in a few saves since I started football manager last season. He can cover between the midfield and the striking role. That's going to be the roles that he uses for us. He's probably going to be more of a backup striker here but he can definitely cover box to box as well and is quite well rounded in his stats no matter where you put him so a really good bench option who should be pushing Puente for that starting role at the advance forward should he not get some goals in these upcoming games but a very good player 17 caps and five international goals someone who we definitely need to try and keep at the club 
albeit we might have to try and get him on a bit of a more rotation contract. But three and a half star player on the bench is a very nice problem to have. And as I said, we've got a stack more options. Some players out on loan, some players in on loan who are unregistered for some reason. And yeah, we've got lots of players on the bench. So I won't run you guys through all of them. We'll introduce you to them when we need to, if we use them. But that's how the team looks. I'm actually pretty happy with it. They look fairly well suited to what we're going to try and do here, which is nice. Obviously, the tactical familiarity will grow as we play some games. And with this being late in the season, by the time we hit the start next season, I'm hoping this little burst that we have at the back end of this season is going to provide us with a real platform to kick off next season and play really well for the whole year and hopefully we can do enough in this late part to try and secure Champions League football as well but we're going to get into some gameplay off the back now that we've ran you guys through the squad and the club mostly here at Monterey so we'll be back shortly for our first game in charge and it is in Liga MX the second part of the season where we really need a win to try and stay in the playoff hunt and we are taking on fourth place Pumas away from home. And we are about to get into our first game in charge here at Monterey. There is the Pumas lineup, new to the continent, new to the country, so don't have much of an idea about their team, unfortunately. They're going with quite a narrow system, though. And there is our 4 3 3 Fuente up top, has just recovered from a little niggle in time to play this game. And there's the table. They are fourth at the moment, Pumas, only five points in front of us, but they are a team who are predicted to finish around about there anyway. We were supposed to be ahead of them, so this is a good chance for us to see exactly how we match up and we are in the blue and the black playing left to right Pumas in the light colors are kicking off in the opposite direction and hopefully we can get off to a good start but mainly just want to see how we go on and how we look in this first game in charge as it does remain nil all after the first highlight two minutes gone here and we have an early corner so we're in a good position early Renan puts the ball in it's headed back away but he's back on the ball just outside the box plays that to Barco and hopefully we can, can make a good start, a long clearance there from Pumas. But Schneller is going to take his sweet, sweet time over this and try and get us going yet again on a attack, hopefully. But early doors looking quite good, earning an early corner. It'll be interesting to see how well we do from those with some quite tall timber in the box with those two centre-backs and our striker having quite a bit of height and good hitting and jumping reach stats as well. So that could be an area where we do look to dominate games from from set pieces, there's a long ball over for Fuente, just holds his man up, and Gutierrez, and who else would it be, Alejandro Gutierrez, the man we had at Atletico Nacional, gets our first goal here at Monterrey, nearly said Atletico Nacional, again, and we go 1-0 up after three minutes, we were just knocking the ball about pretty innocuously in the midfield, Paolo with a long ball, Fuente just holds the defender up, Gutierrez runs onto it and buries in the bottom left corner, and a really good start, 1-0 up after three minutes away from home. 16 minutes gone here, the first highlight since we got that opening goal, and it's a throw in in a good area of the pitch. Clayton puts a ball in, headed away, but we do keep position. Wallison tries to find Gutierrez, cut out, but we will get on the ball from the clearance and look to go forward again. Wallison making his way forward. They leave it for Puente, and that's a little naughty finish to make it 2-0 after 16 minutes. A great start. I think that was a little back heel from our striker there, and this is a really good start, this team proving that they are a lot better than what they were with the previous manager in their last few games to start this part of the season. Wellison with a ball, I thought one of the defenders was going to pick that up. And as I said, little back heel into the bottom right corner there. And we go 2-0 up before 20 minutes. 29 minutes gone here. It's another good highlight for us starting-wise anyway as we have a corner headed away, but we're in position. Barco with a shot, hits the bar. That would have been a stunner to make it 3-0 before half time but it remains 2-0 at the half hour mark. 40 minutes gone here and Pumas start with a highlight for the first time in this game so far. We do clear it. They get back in position though, albeit we've got them in their own half, albeit not for very long. And now we get the ball again. And now Wallison driving forward down this left-hand side. He has a slide tackle. He has to get the shot past and it does go out for a corner. And we get ourselves another corner, which Renan is going to put in cleared away yet again by the Pumas defence, and Barco wins the ball back for us again here, so we might have a chance at another attack to try and make it 3-0 before half-time. Renan tries to put a ball in, it is blocked, and we'll have yet another corner in this highlight, but really happy with how we're playing so far. We've looked quite good against the team up there in the table, so this is quite promising 
for our time here. And if we can keep playing like this, albeit against teams like Club America, it's probably going to be a little bit tougher. But it's going pretty well for us as we're going to win a free kick here as well. And Renan is going to be on this. Good free kick taker. Tries to find one of our big boys at the far post. They do deal with it, Pumas. But Hernandez tidies things up for us. But as I said, if we can play this way against the team towards the top of the table. That's looking good. There's a good shot from Renan. Forces a good save out of the goalkeeper. And they hoof it clear to the Pumas. And it will be another corner. So some good sustained pressure for us to finish this first half. We try and find someone at the near post. Khan, we put a ball into the mixer. They do clear it away. We are back in possession. Play it back to Clayton, but the highlight finally finishes, and it's two all as we get close to the half time. Should have said two nil as we get close to the half time, and now it is half time. And as I said, towards the latter stages of that half, of that fairly long highlight was played really well. You look, we haven't given Pumas much of a chance in this game, and we've looked quite good when we have been in possession, more or less doubling our xG, but having a lot of chances and playing pretty well. It has to be said for our first game in charge, especially with the tactic where the familiarity with it. It's only going to grow, so really happy with how things are going. We'll just monitor the boys' fitness in the second half and see who's playing well and isn't before we make any substitutions. But as I said, really happy with how things are going, and hopefully the boys can keep it up as we are 2-0 up against the fourth-place Pumas as we crack into the second half. 51 minutes gone. It's our first highlight of the second half as we have a throw-in that's taken short to Ayala, and hopefully we can make it 3-0 because that would be a very good scoreline. Just put this game... Well and truly beyond doubt, well if Sim with a shot there, but it is straight at Edson. Playing quite well though, still dominating the game and it remains 2-0. Okay, 62 minutes gone here. We've got quite a few players on yellow hearts, but a couple of them are not in the green rating wise. So we'll take our opportunity here with us playing quite well to bring some boys off the bench and see what they can do. It will be Barco and Renan coming off. Deluna is the obvious replacement for Barco being the only guy who can play in the defensive midfield role. So because of that, We'll bring Gerardo on for Renan as well. We might be missing a little bit from set pieces because of that second change. But hopefully these guys provide a bit of impetus off the bench. And we can keep this good performance going as it remains 2-0 as we get inside the last half hour here. And 66 minutes gone now. The second half, not very much highlight-wise. We're still having the dominance in this game, but not much threatening on goal compared to the first half. But Wellison, who has been playing quite well now on a red heart, so we'll make this our final change for the game. He will come off. And it will be Gerardo Garcia to come on for him. And we'll see what he can do on the left wing. Those are our three subs. Still 2-0 up with 20 to go. 74 minutes gone here. And we do have a throw in a good area of the pitch. Gutierrez on the ball into Gerardo. And now it's Garcia with a shot. But it's a bit of a fizzer along the ground with not much power on it. And they do claim it safely. Although we have a throw in shortly off the back of that. And Gerardo plays it back to Clayton. Looking to find Garcia with that ball. But it's cut out. Albeit we will get position back from it. And now it's Ayala putting a ball over. Finds Gutierrez on a tight angle. Plays that back for Clayton as a shot. But straight at Edson again. But playing quite well still. Which is good to see as we now enter the last 12 minutes. And it remains 2-0. But we have another throw in here. Albeit that ball is cut out. But Ayala will tidy things up. We just hold the ball up on this left hand side. Although that's a poor pass. And now Pumas might have a chance. On the counter attack, trying to mount their real first attack of the game because haven't seen too much from them so far. And they do keep possession here now in our half, which is a little bit dangerous. Rosali is making his way down the right hand side. Be a bit frustrating if we conceded here because we've looked a far better team, although Hernandez with a good ball out there to clear the danger for now. But they are back in possession here. Ah, Pumas, they knock the ball about quite nicely outside the box. Rosali is on the edge of it, just puts the ball across, finds Romero. And he makes it 2-1 with 10 to go. A little bit frustrating that. Although there's a bit, good bit of shithousery from our goalkeeper there to keep them from picking up the ball and taking a quick restart. It's a good stuff there by Schneller. But yeah, just a simple fizzing ball there from Rosali. It's a good finish from Romero. And they're back in this game here. Pumas 2-1 with 10 to go. Hopefully we can hold on. 87 minutes gone here. And Pumas looking to equalize with a corner. But we do head it away in Garcia. And a good little place here to try and launch a counter-attack from us, making his way down the left-hand side with some fresh legs, just making his way towards the box, loses the ball, no penalty, which is fair enough because he did win the ball. Now it's a counter-attack here for Pumas. Good slide tackle there from Montoya, though, and Ayala will tidy things up for us as we look to hold on for this win, which, based on what we've seen highlight-wise and the stats, feels 
quite well deserved. If it went to a draw, it would be pretty frustrating. A bit of a loose pass from us there, but we do get possession back shortly afterwards. And Ayala makes his way down the left. Garcia back out to Ayala in a good amount of space. What can he do? Just loses possession, but it will go out for a corner. Trying to milk a penalty a little bit there, but definitely won the ball to the Pumas defender. And we put this in, and it is Paolo who gets his head to it. That is what we were after at the start of the game. We said that corners could be quite good for us here because, as we said, some tall timber both at centre-back and up front. And it is the right centre-back from Brazil, Paolo, who puts that in at the near post. And that certainly wraps the game up. Free one as we enter at a time. And we've got a corner with 20 seconds to go here. Really happy with how we've played today. Go to areas to put this in. They clear it away. Do Pumas, but Dorado will tidy things up. Bit of a poor pass there as we give possession away. And Carrasco takes control of this too. Good pass over for Romero. So they're going to try and get a second, although they just stall a bit there on the counter. We play a ball forward. Pumas in possession, but surely we'll be close to full time now as they're just knocking the ball about the back. Are the team who are currently in four for long ball four, but Schneller will take and puts down his feet, and that is full time. A really good performance, as I said, against the team which are fourth in the league, and we looked really good during it. 20 shots overall, 10 on target, just out doing our XG. Pretty solid performance, no real dips or lows during that game, just really good and solid. And with this being our first game in charge, it's only really going to improve once these guys get more familiar with our tactics, so we kept them pretty quiet, considered a goal, which was a little bit frustrating, but on the whole, that's about as good as you can ask for in your first game in charge at a decent club like Monterey, especially when you're playing another decent team in Puma, so we'll take that, and hopefully that can give us something to kick on and finish the rest of the season here off quite nicely as we look to make those playoffs and hopefully get a Champions League place for next season. So a really good win for us in that first game in charge here at Monterey, not too sure if the headline there is actually accurate. I'm pretty sure I checked how teams do qualify for continental football, and I think they're definitely still in the hunt as long as they finish thereabouts. And yeah, that's a really promising sign for us, obviously. Going to be a few more tougher opposition here in Mexico, but not too many more than that. So that's quite promising. As I said, the likes of Club America are going to be the real test here, but that's a good start, especially as we're going to have some transfer windows to build this team up should we need to. But on the whole, for the rest of this season anyway, based on that performance, it does look quite good for us. The signings that are there are not players. Don't worry about that. It's just staff that are still coming into the club. So with that, when we move up to 11th on 17 points, not very much clear of the teams behind us. So we still need to keep a good run of form going here to make sure that we do make the latter stages of the season. But we're not that far behind the team up in fourth anyway. And Club Leon, who are on 20 points, albeit they have a game in hand, four points behind Pachuca. So looking pretty good. We can definitely make ground on those teams, but I'm not too sure how much with only seven games left for us in the second half of the season. But if we can play like that for the rest of our time here, this season anyway, we should definitely be making it into the playoff part of this Torneo Clausura and Liga MX, which will be good and will give us a chance, as I said to try and earn continental football next season, which based on how we did in the first part of the season, even though they didn't make the final, which would have guaranteed them it, which is a little bit frustrating, but they are a team that do, based on what I've seen already, look quite capable of playing continental football next season. So hopefully we can get them there. Otherwise, the season after should things not quite go our way. But that will do for today's episode. Hopefully you guys have got to know this team and enjoy what you saw from them in our first game in charge here at Monterey. Now, in terms of when we'll be back, I think the obvious choice is going to be the Copper MX final. We might have to split that across two episodes just as I still get integrated into things here myself and get staff and things all sorted out. And it is a derby game as well, so it is all the more bigger and it is against Tig Race. So that is going to be a big couple of games for us. Hopefully, we can win a title even though it won't really feel like we deserve to be winning it having only just joined the club. But any bit of silverware is a good bit of silverware. I'm pretty sure the winner of the Copper MX doesn't get into continental football, but I might just check that before tomorrow's episode to make sure. But I'm pretty sure that is not a thing here in Mexico. It would be nice, but I don't think it is. And then we'll carry on with the rest of the season off the back of that and hopefully make our way into the second phase 
playoffs but that will do for today's episode if you enjoyed that squad introduction a little bit of a look at the club and that win against Pumas then remember to go down below leave a thumbs up on the video and if you want to keep up to date with this hexagon challenge our last piece we are after here at Monterey then remember to also hit that subscribe button and turn that notification bell on as well but until tomorrow when we'll play the first leg of the Copper Amex final the home league against Tigres in a derby thank you very much for watching Keep on keeping on, and I'll see you then. Cheers.